have been working, um, I think about 40 minutes, and I'm just going to videotape the last part of the ride. Um, because he started off a little extra wobbly today, a little more unstable than usual. Number one, it tells me get my butt in the saddle more often. That's what helps this horse. Even if it's hot, we can find a little bit of shade to walk around in. And as he's gotten more stable through the pelvis, through the spine, you can see he's, he's chosen to pick up the speed a little bit. He's not quite as slow. And so that forwardness is always the result of stabilizing the spine, stabilizing the pelvis, which means getting internal straightness, level straight through the neck, level through the back, barely enough engagement that they don't have to use the muscles on the forehand to stabilize their body in motion. <coughs> He's still going in and out of it. But you notice when he overcurls the neck, he chomps the bit, right? And that's a direct result of losing the stability through the back and the hindquarter. When he gains the stability, the neck changes. He actually sort of takes the bit very gently. And so a rein contact for this horse is sort of the final result of improving the engagement of the hindquarter, the stability of the pelvis, the stability of the spine. There, he just completely loses it again, right? So it's still coming and going, and it really took quite a long time today to regain his stability. That lengthening of the neck goes hand in hand. Just notice the mouth quiets down, whether he's in long and low, or he's sort of long and level, taking a light contact on the bit. Both of those uses of the neck are the result of the work I'm doing with my body on this figure eight. And we're using a constant turn um, because he doesn't have, like his bigger issue is placing the hind legs deeper and stabilizing the hindquarters. So I would say the bigger challenge for him in his rehab is restoring engagement of the hindquarters. Uh, the straightness, keeping him level and getting the alignment of the spine, stabilizing the rotation, that still needs to be addressed, but it's not his main issue. I can just sort of address it as I go along. And, but that's why we had to come back to staying on a tight turn this whole ride, is he just started off pretty wobbly, really using his neck the way he used to, which is the over curling, the chomping on the bit. And you can see also as his back and hindquarters are more stable, when his neck looks straighter, whether it's long and low or sort of long and level taking the contact, you don't see me move my hands as much because he's steering, he's following the direction of my seat and I don't need the rein support nearly as much once the back and hindquarters are stable. So everything that's easier for the human eye to see, which is the use of the neck, the use of the front legs, the shoulders, all that, that only frees up and can be correct if the hindquarters are minimally engaged, if the back is stable and the spinal functions are sort of minimally correct and stabilized. As soon as he loses it back here, you can see the wobble there and you instantly see him over curl the neck up front and then he starts chomping the bit. And so as I adjust my balance and stay on this path of travel, which is the narrowness of the path and the repetition of it is visually helping me feel all the little losses of balance sooner than later. And my figure eight isn't perfect. I think this direction's a little bigger than that direction, but it works. And it's mostly to help me feel the details of any forces that are going too much side to side, too much up and down, and sort of adjusting my balance and my body weight to keep encouraging more stability. There's a very nice step, very nice couple of steps. And it really is 
at the very end of the ride today, these last sort of 20 minutes, where he's getting back to kind of where we were when we were riding more regularly and not doing as much groundwork. So for him, the groundwork helps a little, but not a lot. He really needs to be ridden, so I'll put that on my calendar, get my budding gear in the heat, because that's what helps him. So you can see how the mouth gets quiet as the neck gets long, and I don't have to move my hands so much to steer. My rein aids are getting smaller and more invisible as his back and hindquarters start to restore their job, restore their function, do what they were meant to do, right? And he loses it a little bit, almost always in the same spots. So I just pay closer attention to how I might help him through those spots. And when he overcurls the neck, I really have to let go of the rein contact. There's just nothing you can do when horses have been taught roll cur or they've been taught to lean on the bit for their balance or had a lot of leverage. And what he learned to do as a dressage horse was go faster than he could really manage his own body weight and learn to just tighten his neck and lean on the bit. And so I've had to retrain him or rehab him with almost no rein use other than little feels left and right alternately to try to help him keep the neck straight. And as soon as I hear him chomping the bit or I see him curling the neck, I just loosen the reins and focus from here back. And the better he does back there, the more he comes out of that terrible, disgusting old habit that was created for him. It was the last vestige of finding his stability given the parameters of what the rider was asking for. There. And what that caused was more and more instability through the back and the hindquarter. So driving the horse energetically into the bit looks like that. That's what it teaches horses, right? Letting him pick his speed, even though he started off really slow, you can see the more he feels stable, the more the neck returns a healthy function, the more he chooses to seek a little bit of rain contact. Very gently, very tenuously, but it's there a few strides at a time, right? The steering gets easier from the saddle. I don't work as hard as a rider. And right now towards the end of the ride, it's kind of coming and going, so you can see the difference. We get a few good strides, like right there. Then we start to lose it in the turn, or we lose it when we go a little bit downhill, or maybe a tiny bit uphill, which you can't see, but he definitely notices. Right, that's a little better, although he didn't quite make the turn as smoothly as he did before. This is where he always loses it. Ah, so that was a little bit better, <laughs> stepping through the tricky spot. Ah, and then he held his balance coming around that turn. And he had to slow down a little to do it. So again, if my focus is energetically forward into the bit, I'm never going to get this horse to rehab because that's what he learned and this was the result of it. He got very stressed. He probably has some neck arthritis as a result, which is why I can hardly touch the reins. And it made his back and hindquarter less and less and less stable. So reversing that use of his body, there, very nice, very nice. Reversing that use of his body is no small effort and it takes a while. But as he starts to, I was a little bummed that he needed as much support as he did today and that it took about 40 minutes to get him back to where I kind of thought we were before I did more groundwork. So my bad. And he obviously needs me to support him through this a bit more because he's not, he can't hold it without the three-dimensional support of the rider or the weight of the rider. Sometimes just our body weight makes the biggest difference to helping horses stabilize the back and hindquarter. We don't have to do anything other than stay balanced when they lose their balance. 
but that weight can be a tremendous help. So I'm happy we got back to sort of where we left off in one ride, even though it took a while. It's in there somewhere, right? But what that tells me, the 40 minutes it took to sort of start finding the good steps again, and for him to feel stable enough to let go of the neck, relax, and pick up a little bit of speed, the fact that it took that long uh, tells me I need to keep working on this because I know to start offering more challenges when what took 40 minutes today takes five minutes. When, that, when I get on and I start to feel that stability and I start to feel these good steps at the walk in the beginning of the ride, then I know he's physically prepared for a, a new challenge or the next challenge. And when it still takes half the ride or more just to start to feel that stability and see these changes that are still coming and going even at the end of the ride, that just tells me we're not solid, right? But the exercise that achieved the good steps tells me I'm using the right strategy. This is going to work. I just need to repeat it and do it more often. Give him a little more time to make these physical changes in his body until he shows me through his movement, stability under the saddle, use of the neck, seeking the rain contact. That's when he's going to tell me he's ready for something more challenging. Right now, this is enough of a challenge that I need to stick with this sort of pattern and exercise until it gets easier. Time-wise, I got no freaking idea. Every horse is different. I go, but I know when they get there. I feel it when they get there, but, and I know they'll all get there. It's just a matter of practice and finding the right strategy that gives me the improvement I'm looking for. And then it's a matter of building up the new habit of coordination in the nervous system as well as developing the muscular support to retain that, that becoming the new habitual use of the body instead of this old business. Yeah. So that curling of the neck and chomping of the bit has, has been his unique sign of stress and instability and it was perpetual when we started. So the fact that he can come and go in and out of it, right, as a direct reflection of restoring correct function through the spine and the pelvis, right? We're on our way, but kind of like us going to the gym, we're not there yet. Yeah. There we go, give a little push. Give a little push. There you go. Yeah, and it's a good summer project to just get on and ride a figure eight. Even though we're both dripping in sweat, neither one of us is breathing too hard. So we're not creating stress in the work. We're just working on coordination and muscle use. And there with his nose on the ground, taking the reins all the way to the buckle, right? I feel softness coming through under the saddle. That's where he's restoring some of the natural length of the top line muscles. And again, he can't stay there for very long because his skeleton has a little bit of a wobble and his muscles have to shorten up again in the neck and the back at the same time in order to regain his stability in the way his body was used to. So breaking habits is kind of a big deal. You go in and out, in and out, but when I start to feel the new and better movement coming sooner in the ride or lasting for more strides at a time or getting there with sort of less of a rain aid, less of a humongous weight adjustment in my body, when all of those things start to feel easier that's how I know he's starting to own it as a new way of moving. So until I feel that, 
I mean, if the weather permits and I can play a little bit with trot and canter, especially on the ground, I can throw that in the mix. But even if I can't do this, we're just coming into the hottest three months of the year. So even if we stick with this, maybe for another month or more, um, it's still, he's just going to continue to improve, right? Because it's really about focusing our efforts on strengthening the weaknesses, changing the coordination, number one, and then strengthening the coordination in the way he should have it. And you can see, sometimes he loses that stability and balance a lot. There, he's got it back. Well, he held it a few extra strides. Let's just see how long it lasts. And what self-carriage feels like is an absence of having to make adjustments and give aids. That's what self-carriage feels like. It's incredibly stable. It's easy to steer. You don't have to use the reins a lot. The horse follows your seat. And so I'm getting little sneaky peeks of that and then a whole lot of loss of balance in between like that, right? But I don't know what's going on in his body. He might be feeling something change that I know nothing about. So I just keep balancing myself. I keep him on the figure eight, even if I have to use a strong rein. And as long as he's finding a few good steps, I don't necessarily need to change what I'm doing. I just need to give his body some time to adapt and change in the way that's easiest for him. And I think that's about 15 minutes. Maybe we'll just do a few more minutes, but you can see sometimes the coming and going of the balance versus the imbalance is subtle and sometimes it's dramatic and it doesn't matter. Imbalance is imbalance, and balance is balance. Yes, there I get a breath, a few strides, a nice little taking of the ring contact on his part. And he held it through that turn where he was struggling. So something might have changed, and we get distracted by a fly and we fall apart. Yeah, then we come back together, yes. So the way I know the ride was successful is by the end of the ride, no matter where we started, and we did not start off in a great place today, but no matter where we started, I'm getting to those good steps with less effort on my part, right? So the aids feel lighter. The timing of the aids is um, less. So it's like, instead of constant aids, it's sort of, I have to give the aids with more time in between because he's carrying himself. And he can string together more and more strides of those good steps. And I think people expect horses to get their balance and keep it, but they don't. It's just like us. We get our balance, we lose our balance. When we're learning to ride a bike, we fall over a lot. We get it, we don't get it. Then all of a sudden, something kind of clicks and we get that coordination and we finally have the muscle strength to actually pedal that bicycle all the way down the street. But until then, we don't have the coordination. We don't have the muscle support for the coordination to ride a bike. So all those times we, we wobble, we have to stop, we go slow, we lose control a little, we fall off, we fall over. All of those are part of the process of learning that coordination. And so it's the same for a horse. It's not an instantaneous frame that you put them in and then voila, they're miraculously in balance and they just stay there. It's a process. It's a developmental thing where he gets better, he gets worse. He gets warmer, he gets colder. He loses it a little, he loses it a lot. He finds it, he holds it for a few more strides, then he loses it again, right? And that's really what the process of rehab looks like. And it's pretty slow and it isn't exciting to watch because externally, we don't look like we're doing very much. 
internally, we are both busier than a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. This takes all of my concentration to be in the right place at the right time. And it obviously takes all of his attention to feel his way through this, to sort of work through the resistance I give him in the aids and discover changes to how he coordinates his movement. It's a big deal, right? So, like I said, I get good steps, I get not so good steps, but the whole focus where we are busiest is between him and I, like two dancers. We feel each other, we do this dance, but nobody else can really see what it looks like. But we feel it very clearly, right? So I'm teaching him how to be a better dancer, which means I have to be a pretty good dancer myself, even when he loses his balance. But I can't dance for him. I can't hold him on those footprints or make him use his body, even as his dance partner. He's got to figure that out for himself. And that's what self-carriage is. So I think he's having, a, oh, deep, yes. Deep changes through the back muscles. Um, so I think I'll wrap it up there. I was, I, before I did all the groundwork, he actually had sort of arrived where I wanted him and we seem to have lost that. We've taken a little bit of a step back. Um, so it is what it is. I just show the work of the horses. And just when you think you know a thing or two, the horse makes a liar out of you. That's just how things roll. So this is what it looks like today. And the next time we'll do a check-in, hopefully we see a little bit more improvement. But at least with the two videotapes today, you can kind of see where we started today and also where we're winding up, right? Which isn't as consistent as I would like by the end of the ride, but far more strides of balance coming into the figure eight, definitely compared to where we started today. And that's kind of the best we can do with us and with our horse, is just keep looking for those good strides where everything gets easier, more stable and lighter, and then manage the loss of balance sort of as efficiently as we can until the horse goes, okay, okay, I got it again. I'm back on the bike. I can pedal a little bit more. So hopefully that helps someone out there who is rehabbing their horse from lameness, like this guy with navicular and ring bone. At least he's not lame, but we still have a little ways to go to build up where he should be strong.